We have so many trains to run and so little time. Welcome back, folks. Hope you're having a great week. I've been spending the last month and a half working on recording every engine in the collection. Yes, every single engine. In this video, you're going to see over 140 engines. Now, I'm sure there are some of you out there that are laughing. Ha ha ha, RBP, I have 800 engines. But alas, I think we're still going to have a good time. There's a lot of trains you're going to see in this video. Everything from my friend Thomas, through the vintage trains to the modern trains. Anything that I have, you're going to see it in this video. Pretty sure my batteries are dead. So thank you all for being so patient as I've been putting this together. Shall we get started? Sit back, relax, and enjoy. I also want to take a minute and thank everyone who has sent in videos for the RBP and Friends Summer Series. I'm going to have that video posted sometime in July, so I'm going through all of the emails. I got a lot of emails. A lot. <sighs> Lots of great stuff so far, and I can't wait to go through all of it. We're going to kick things off with my favorite steam engine of all time, the Hudson. My favorite Hudson is the post-war 773. This is the 1964 version. And I also have this pre-war 763. Beautiful vintage Hudsons. Also have a variety of Hudsons from the MPC era. I really like these TMCC era Hudsons. This is the Yellow Belly, Chesapeake in Ohio. And of course, the Commodore Vanderbilt. What a beautiful train. I also really like this 5433. This is a TMCC Hudson, and it's the 50th anniversary. These Weaver brass models are really cool, too. This is the Hiawatha and the Blue Goose. Rounding out some of the more modern Hudsons would be the famous streamlined Dreyfus Hudson, one of my personal favorite engines. The Empire State Express. Attention passengers, the Empire State Express is now boarding. I almost forgot my pink breast cancer awareness Hudson, but this one's really special. A lot of people have asked, Chris, why do you have a pink train? This engine means a lot. I can't believe I almost forgot about this cool Semi-scale Western Maryland Hudson. Shame on me. And the 785 Hudson. Rounding out our Hudsons is the famous Lionel 700E. Now, this is not the pre-war version. I wish I had the pre-war version. This is the Lionel Legacy Vision Line version. And this is a great segue into our next category of trains in my collection, the Lionel Vision Line. Vision Line is always exciting. Quick refresher on Vision Line. This represents the pinnacle of Lionel engineering. 
That's about all I have time to say in this video. Let's get right to it. This Vision Line Niagara pops right off the layout. This engine had all kinds of cool features when it first came out. It had the force coupler. It has a water scoop effect, which you're seeing right here. Next is our most recent Vision Line edition, which is the Class A. The Class A with all of those iconic sounds. The Black Bonnet 21010 Massive engine, and really hard to keep clean. These glossy engines, you gotta either keep them covered, keep some makeup brushes around or something, because these engines show dust in like two seconds. Even recording these engines is a giant pain. <laughs> we have our GS series. This one was so neat that I ended up getting two of them. I've said it before and I'll say it again, this is the most requested engine when people come to visit my layout, the Vision Line Challenger. Can you run that big yellow engine that looks like a hot dog? Yes. Yes, I can. <laughs> The Big Boy seems to always be the most requested engine in my videos, and for good reason, and it has quite a presence on the layout. This particular clip is from my Big Engines video where I lashed up the Challenger and the Big Boy together. That was one of the most fun trains I think I ever assembled. Next to the Union Pacific Big Boy, there was one other engine that's always requested that I've hardly ever run. Do you know what it is? Thomas. Believe it or not, Lionel produced a number of engines from the Thomas and Friends series. So you have Thomas, Percy, oh, I heard me. The number six green engine. James, I the number five red engine. and Diesel. These engines don't spend a lot of time at my house because they pretty much live at my nephew's house. This is my favorite video clip that I took of Thomas coming around the bend. It's like the song. No, I'm not going to sing that. Though I kind of want to. And since we are in the spirit of some of the more fun and whimsical trains, let's take a look at this awesome Halloween Camelback. This is a fully loaded Lionel Legacy model. Since I'm feeling all spooky now from that Halloween train, let's look at this cool Lion Chief Area 51 set. I strongly recommend this set. It's hilarious. I also have this really cool trippy trolley with all the LED lights. The Pet Shop Express travels the best. This little engine and the little remote fit very easily into my bags when I'm traveling. So chances are, if I ever come to your layout, this train's coming with me. And yes, Norm Charbonneau, if you're watching this, it's coming for your layout next. Rounding out my more whimsical trains is the Disney Frozen set. 
And what's really cool about this train engine is it was modeled after the General, this famous set. This particular one you're seeing is the MPC era General. I hadn't run the General in a long time. So it was a treat to get it out of the box and on the layout for this video. Let's jump into the next category, shall we? Passenger trains. This first passenger train I owe to my friends at trains.com. This is the Texas Special Lionel Legacy set. Following our Texas Special is our Lionel Legacy Black Bonnet. Next is the famous J-Class 611, just returned home to Roanoke. So really good timing on this one. This has been one that I've been running quite a bit lately. The Lionel TMCC Hiawatha set. I don't even know what to say about this set. It's a pretty one. It is a beautiful train. And next we have the Blue Comet. The Blue Comet, another fan favorite. Following that is the Pennsylvania Railroad Torpedo. What a cool engine. This is a conventional engine by Williams, another brass engine. This B&O American Royal Blue set with these wood-sided passenger cars. Beautiful train. This is actually older footage I took. I wanted to incorporate a couple clips from my layout in its older state. And of course we have the massive Pennsylvania Railroad E8s. This is the early 90s version of the Southern 4501, the Johnny Cash steam engine. Although I think it was painted black, but I still like to call it the Johnny Cash engine. Southern Crescent with its iconic green colors. Pennsylvania S1, huge engine. And these passenger cars, these south wind cars, stretch pretty much the entire length of my layout. <laughs> this Chessie Steam Special has a sad little whistle, doesn't it? <laughs> That MPC goodness.
And let's not leave out the huge MTH Premier Restoration Series Big Boy. The Amtrak Acela Set by Lionel. It's awesome. I got a blast running this train. And since we're on an Amtrak kick, let's look at some of the other Amtrak engines. And rounding out this section, the MTH Amtrak AEM-7, the toaster. Look at this little guy. For anyone watching who enjoys a good diesel engine, this next section is all about diesel engines, primarily freight-based diesel engines. We talked about passenger trains a little bit ago, then we're going to get into F units in a little bit. So this is all about freight. I don't think I can even go through each one. So we're just gonna check them all out.
This next section is all about F units. I wanted to give them their own section. There is nothing more iconic than the Santa Fe F unit. So we have the post-war variation, Menards. I really like the Menards version. This engine cracks me up. The MTH plated version, though, is my second favorite. Next to the post-war, of course. The post-war Texas Special F3. The MTH Premier, Baltimore and Ohio F3. This MPC era, Pennsylvania Railroad F3 in the Tuscan color. The post-war, New York Central F3. The MTH Premier, Chesapeake and Ohio F7s. The MPC era, Illinois Central F3s. The MPC Daylight F3 has this funny little horn in it. The Aberdeen, Carolina, and Western with its metallic purple colors. This one's really become a popular model. But you can't have the Aberdeen without the Norfolk Southern OCS set. The Lionel Union Pacific F7 set. One of the more recent legacy sets as well. Earlier in the video, we saw the Black Bonnet steam engine sets. Here is the Santa Fe Black Bonnet F3. Next, we have the Kansas City Southern OCS set. And wrapping up this section of F units, the MPC Southern Crescent F3. You still with me? This next section is arguably one of our favorites, steam engines, such as this remake of the famous Lionel post-war girls train. <laughs> this one is so cool. A lot of history behind this set. Union Pacific FEF. Two versions of this here. The Lionel, which is the 844. That's the scale version. And then the MTH, Rail King 822. Also have some cool engines like the Unshrouded J-Class. This is an MTH model. This model is interesting because it was, I think it was only made one time. This Union Pacific 9000, I kind of cheated this one in here. We bought this for my dad as a retirement gift and I ran it in a video, but I didn't want to leave it out. So here it is. Not on my layout, but really cool engine. Some other cool engines would be this Western Pacific GS6. This is an MTH model. Really cool engine. This Texas and Pacific Lionel engine. This one has an incorrect color on it. It has this minty green color, which it's not supposed to look like this. I'm hoping that in the long term, who knows, maybe this becomes a collectible model.
Then we have the famous Berkshire locomotives like the 765 nickel plate. Also have this Chesapeake and Ohio version, as well as this Lion Chief version. We actually opened this one together in a video. This is a fun little set. The Red Pacemaker Mohawk. You wanna talk about a cool steam engine. This was a sleeper. I think a lot of folks glossed over this when this came out and then it sold out like that. The classic Shea steam engine. These are always fun. This one has a really cool whistle. The Baltimore and Ohio Pacific. This is a K-Line model, and this was my first command engine. And rounding out our steam section are the big articulated engines. Here we have this third rail Yellowstone. The Baltimore and Ohio EM1. And the Fantasy Scheme Western Maryland EM1. The NW Y6B. And the CNO Allegheny. I had to include the triplex in this video. I recently gave this engine away at the April York show. So if you haven't seen that video, it's the one right before this one. Did I get them all? I'm, I'm losing track at this point. I don't know where I am anymore. Now that we looked at some of the biggest steam engines in my collection, let's look at some of the littlest engines in my collection. The Lion Chief Bethlehem Steel Dock Cider. We also have an MTH Premier CNO 44 tonner. And I also have this Atlas Premier GE 44 tonner, and this is the route of the wine train. Rounding out our switchers is this New York Central. I don't do a lot of video clips in this little industrial area, so this was kind of fun. That's roughly a hundred some engines so far, so we're getting towards the end. We've almost made it. Our next section is all about Union Pacific heritage. Here's a train that I don't run too often, and this is the Presidential Funeral Train, the Union Pacific 4141. Keeping with the Union Pacific Heritage theme are all six of the Union Pacific Heritage engines. These represent those fallen flag railroads. You have the Western Pacific, Chicago Northwestern, Rio Grande, Missouri Pacific, Southern Pacific, and my favorite, the Katy. Look at that thing. All right, we're down to the last two categories. There's a lot of fun stuff in the post-war era, like the GG1, the 746 Norfolk and Western, and a couple of others to check out. The 675 was actually my neighbor Sam's train engine. I bought this off of him. So the only vintage engine in the collection that I know where it came from. And stepping back into the pre-war era, we have the Red Comet and this Lionel 226E. And then we have our MTH tin plate remake. Vintage trains always make me think of the holiday season, which leads me into our final category, Christmas. If there's one thing train collectors really enjoy about Christmas, it's the Polar Express. And who can forget Frosty the Snowman? I didn't expect to end with Frosty the Snowman. 
But I think it's kind of fitting because we ran literally every engine in the collection. So someone had to be first, someone had to be last. So there you have it, the RBP collection summed up into one video. Thank you for everyone who has been requesting this over the last two years. I know it took a long time to make and I'm sorry for that, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Ironically enough, while I was making this video, the Strasburg 89 showed up. So you'll notice it's not in the video, but we're gonna check this one out in my next video. As always, a huge thank you to all of my subscribers and everyone who's been supporting this channel. My name is Chris and this is RBP Trains. We'll see you next time.